What's your I met a celebrity that didn't let on that I knew who they were story. My mom yelled at Pierce Brosnan. She and my dad were at a ski resort getting lunch. My mother gets quite hangry, an unfortunate tray I inherited, and was waiting in line to order. Right as she's about to order a guy tried to cut in front of her and interrupt her. She snapped and told him to go to the back of the line like everyone else. She got her food, and went back to my dad sitting there mouth wide open in shock. Do you know who that was? No, that was Pierce Brosnan. You just yelled at James Bond well he shouldn't have tried to cut me. This doesn't count, because it's about my father-in-law, and he legitimately didn't know who she was, but we were vacationing in Maine, and spending a lot of time on the beach. My father-in-law would walk his dog early every one morning. He met this lady and they would meet up, and walk their dogs together then go their separate ways. One morning I got up early to come with him, and to my surprise, we met up with Sigourney Weaver, and went for a walk. Kinda reminds me of when my father first moved to Oslo, Norway back in the late 70s. He lived in this sheety cellar apartment that was in a very nice part of town, so he'd always go for evening walks, just to get out of the dump. On his walks he would occasionally run into this old man walking his dog, and sometimes they would stop and talk about the dog or the weather, or whatever. Turned out that the old man was actually the king of Norway, something my father only found out after later, being completely new to the country. Innocent times. I was 10 years old in 2002 when my mom took me to the Bronx Zoo for the first time. It was a rainy day, so we practically had the whole place to ourselves except for three British kids running around, chaperoned by a woman. My mom quickly befriended the woman, while I made like a kid, and joined the horde, looking at spiders and scorpions, and sharing in the awe and excitement of the animals. After about an hour, when we said our goodbyes, my mother told me that the kid, Daniel, who I had been hanging out with had played Harry Potter in the movie that came out last year. I had thought he looked familiar. My cousin rode a ski lift with Jack Black in Vale. Just the two of them. Her husband and I were in the lift behind them, freaking out. When we got off the lift they'd gone their separate ways. We made our way to her she was like wow, that guy on my lift was so nice. We were like no sheet, that was Jack Black. She was like the school of rock guy. She was so embarrassed, she said she rambled on about living in Iowa for most of their conversation. We laughed our asses off. One of my best friend's doppelganger is Ethan Hawke. Like it's scary how much he resembles him, to the point that during those stupid Facebook challenges he just changed his profile picture to him and nobody realized it. Also his favorite story was one time at San Diego Comic Con he actually confused Rosario Dawson at a hotel bar. Anyway one night I'm walking home from work in New York City, and I see who I thought was my friend, John just walking on a kind of secluded part of 9th RV around Hell's Kitchen, and I yell John. He doesn't turn around, so I decide to yell it again, and instead of responding his pace quickens. I decide the best thing to do is to run at him which seemed to terrify him as keep in mind it's late and there are very few people around. Anyway I catch up to him and say oh, you're not John, and then walk away from what was a very frightened Ethan Hawke. Ha, ah, that's awesome. I met him at a book signing in Brooklyn once, he was nice, but seemed a bit odd. Your story also reminds me of once, when I changed my picture to Mayim Bialik and people didn't know it wasn't me. When I was younger I was compared to Cold Blossom, her show as a kid, and as an adult, when I worked in retail I would constantly get, did you know you look just like me. Yep best was once I was walking in the financial district of New York City and I overheard some tourists excitedly whispering that I was that girl from Big Bang Theory. I didn't say anything to them, but I laughed to myself and kept walking. I mean I have a lip ring piercing. My friend's mom, over 70 years old, owns a small Asian grocery store. Post Malone came walking in with his girlfriend and his mom had no idea who he was. A few cute things happened one. She was nervous because of his tattoos, but happened and worried once he bought a lot of food. She had no idea he was a celebrity. 2. She gave him a free snack for buying so much food and told him to come back for lunchtime for cheap and tasty gyoza. He did come back the next day. 3. 
she was worried he would get mugged going to his car because of three big men outside, so she followed him outside, they were his bodyguards. 4. She really liked his cool car, it was a Lamborghini, she told my friend about the encounter that evening and he pulled up a Yatub video, based on the description, it was him. When Post Malone came back the next day for Chios as she got a selfie with him, it's on my friend's phone, so I don't have the picture available right now. Whole thing is adorable with how innocent his mommies. I worked at a movie theater in Albuquerque at the time they we are filming the first Avengers film. Captain America was about to come out, I remember because we had a huge standee of him in the lobby. I was reading in the box office when three people came up. Guy asked for three tickets to bridesmaids. It was dark out, and he had a green baseball cap and sunglasses. He paid with a credit card. Christopher Evans. I stared at the card, after I swiped it, handed it back. I need you to sign the receipt he did. And then he walked in. Edit. Thanks for all the comments guys. Just to add on. I didn't recognize the other two with him. One was a blonde woman and the other was a guy with bust hair and a 6 o'clock shadow. Also I only lived in ABQ for a year in 2010 to 2011. Working cashier at a tiny candy store during a lull. And suddenly we are swarmed with black suits and shades. Some guys in suits come in with more shades shadowing them. They browse, buy chocolates, and hand them to another suit. I joke to one guy about that box definitely not being big enough for everyone, and he laughs and buys three more. They pack up, and shades escort them out. Couldn't have been more than 10 minutes. When I went home, I found out that Air Force 2 had landed for a conference nearby, and I had managed to convince the secretary of something, defense, I believe, to buy $200 of chocolate. I used to be a server at a Mexican restaurant right outside LA in the late 90s. One day Leonardo DiCaprio came in with who I assume was his mom to have lunch. This old bean post Titanic so really at the peak of his breakthrough mega celeb status. He was wearing a ball cap, sunglasses and unshaven, but I recognized him anyway. I didn't let anyone know, and I wrote something like your movies are awesome, I hope you liked our food on his receipt when I dropped it off at the table. After he left, I swung by and picked up his payment, and he had left me a note back that said thank you so much for not blowing my cover with a $100 tip. Sheet was awesome I was only like 19. I went and got some PlayStation games with it after my shift ended. My dad met Robin Williams in an elevator. He got in, and they rode a few floors in silence. They stopped on a floor and s bunch of fans ran in and started getting pics with Robin. My dad said he was gracious and took pics with everyone. The doors closed and they rode a few more floors and my dad turned and said does that ever get old and Robin smiled and said nope, never. Then my dad got off on his floor and they nodded to one another and my dad went on with his day. This happened yesterday. My wife took my son to the zoo and he wanted to read every little plaque in the reptile area. My wife was distracted for a moment, so he asked the nearest stranger to read the plaque for him. My wife turned around to see Scarlett Johansson happily reading the info to him. My mom is a big sports fan. One time she was shopping at and saw a really large, fit looking man who she didn't immediately recognize but seemed familiar. She thought it must have been a professional football player or something. So she went up to the only other person in the shop, who was this smaller weird looking guy, and asked him if he knew who the athletic looking man was. The short guy looked at my mom, and said that's my bodyguard, I'm Elton John. Apostrophe. I helped Steven Spielberg move his daughter's bags into her college dorm. I was working a shift helping first years move in. And I see a guy in a hat and sunglasses who is unmistakably Spielberg. I strike up a conversation, ask if he needs help with the bags, etc. First names only, we are from CA. My wife, Kate, and I sent all our kids to East Coast schools though. Stuff like that. Later, when his daughter opened the door for the first time, he whipped out a camcorder and, wearing the biggest dad grin, recorded the whole thing before turning the camera on my friend and me to ask us about the city. So, I have a supporting, the luggage, speaking role in a limited release, home movie, film shot by Steven Spielberg. My sister had an encounter with Jack Black where she didn't know it was him. 
we were at a concert for my uncle's band and she texted me from downstairs. While she was charging her phone I totally just had a conversation with someone who looked like a fatter Jack Black I texted her back that our uncle knows Jack Black and that was definitely him. Good thing she didn't do the whole do you ever get that you look like a heavier Jack Black thing. I almost literally ran into Shaq at a small restaurant in LA. He was standing in the doorway. You know how some people are so tall you don't see them? So I'm exiting the doorway and say excuse me man and he stepped aside so I could leave. He is one large human being. In the mid 90s I was a cab driver. Our service was like a cross between a limo and a taxi and we serviced some fancy resorts. As I dropped off my passenger at a resort, another guy asks if I'm a taxi and I say yes, so he tells his friend their cab is here. His friend got in the car and said this ain't no cab, smells too good to be a cab in that unmistakable Chris Rock voice. He and his friend just bullshitted with each other for the 15 minute drive to a local nightclub. There was a white kid trying to talk to a yellow cab driver ahead of us in the parking lot and Chris Rock started imitating the kid, like I need a ride, yeah, I'm drunk, but I need a ride, and I was trying really hard not to laugh out loud. He wasn't nearly as famous yet at the time, but I had seen his stand up routines on Comedy Central, and knew exactly who he was, but didn't go fanboy on him. 1010 would drive Chris Rock again. I was at Ikea in Van Calver and noticed this lady in a low hanging hat had dropped something. I helped her pick it up and noticed it was Sarah McLachlan. Didn't let on that I knew who she was because I couldn't think of anything to say. A couple of years ago me and my sister were at Comic Con. You tend to see some a lot of famous people there, but it's usually with them in booths with guards and stuff, with the exception of Seth Green. Anyway, me and my sister were at one of the booths waiting for their giveaways when a man suddenly came up beside me all excited and in a bit of wonder. He told us how great everything was there and how much of an experience it was for him there. All in a while I was probably looking at him strangely because of how familiar his accent and his voice and his face and his blonde hair was. He asked where we got our poster tubes and that's probably when I remembered who he was but decided to just not mention it because I was kind of still in disbelief and pointed him to one of the far off booths where they sell poster tubes. The man was Owen Wilson. I hadn't been sure it was him because I always thought he'd be a lot taller. It was kind of warming to see how excited he was to be there in the crowds. Not me, but my wife. In college she worked as an intern at a non-profit that was doing some work at a local concert venue, and while she was in the building doing things this older gentleman struck up a conversation with her. He introduced himself as Justin, and she commented about a family member who shares the name, so it would be easy to remember. They talked for a while about random things, the kind of work she was doing, her aspirations after leaving college, etc. He asked if she was staying around for the concert afterward, and she replied that she wasn't a fan of the band and was going to head out as soon as her work there was done. He wished her well and walked off. A short while later someone asked her, so you and Justin seemed to hit it off. What were you two talking about? Oh, just random stuff. Why who is he? The lead singer and guitarist for the Moody Blues. And I just told him I wasn't a fan of his work. Edit. Yeah I read that worm. Thought it was, but didn't know who they were not didn't let on. That I knew who they were. Oh well. Judd Leto. I work in an outdoor goods store in Boulder Co, which for those who don't know, is one of the biggest climbing towns in the US. He came into the store to get some stuff as he's known to travel here and climb with other big pros, notably Alex Honnold who is a buddy of his. He had been outed in the middle of the footwear department by a cow walker on mine in front of a big group of customers so by the time he got over to the climbing area where I work he was really on edge and unfriendly. I walked up to him and honest he just acted like he wasn't hot sheet. I acted like I didn't really know who he was and just spoke to him like any other customer even breaking conversation with him at several points to answer questions for other folks as opposed to giving him my full undivided attention. After about 5 minutes of that he totally relaxed and his entire demeanor changed. He went from being somewhat rude and cold to being very chill, calling me bro etc. And I ended up walking around the store with him for like 25 to 30 minutes helping him shop. 
The only time I implied I knew who he was, was towards the end as I was ringing him up. He asked me to recommend some climbing spots close to town like the Flatirons. It was a beautiful Saturday, and I said to him, that those places are great, but he'll get bombarded by people, if he goes there, and I recommended some spots just outside of town instead. He sorta leaned in, and thanked me for my discretion and that was it. It seemed like he really just wanted to be treated like a normal guy. Used to work at a posh hotel, and we had wedding there all the time. I was pretty young at the time, say 15. David Tennant was at one wedding, Dr. Ducking who, and I was pouring him coffee. At first I was sat there thinking, is he sneaky, so I was playing it cool. I went back to the kitchen to top up more coffee in my coffee jug and the staff were talking about it too before deciding it actually was David Tennant. Spent the rest of the night playing it cool, because I was in that year whatever stage of teenage life. Inside I was freaking out. When I was younger with fewer responsibilities I used to just drive around for the hell of it. To me, driving as a hobby, late at night, was my favorite time. The streets are empty. My uncle is like this too. I asked him if he wanted to meet at American Coney Island. We sat down in a booth. A couple guys walked in after us and sat down behind us. Eminem, Drive, Dread, and a guy I later found out was Jimmy Irvine. We paid them no attention. But we knew who they were. They finished before us, and as they were walking out, Eminem nodded at us and said, Thanks for not making a big deal about this. We got you. He and the other guys disappeared around the corner. I met Justin Timberlake, and had no idea it was him until someone told me afterwards. Went to a basketball game with my dad, and we stopped by the bar area in the arena first. The game had just started, so it was pretty empty except for the bar itself. My dad goes to the restroom and I walk up to the bar to order a beer. There's only one seat at the bar next to a guy in a baseball cap and sunglasses. I politely ask if the seat is taken, and he just says nope, it's all you, man. We shoot the sheet for a couple minutes. He's sitting on my right and eventually he says he and his wife are going to go to their seats. He extends his hand and asks my name. I tell him and ask his name. He says, Justin, nice to meet you dude, have a good night. He and his wife leave and the bartender comes up to me and says, you know that was Justin Timberlake, right? I immediately did a double take and couldn't believe I didn't recognize him even with the hat and sunglasses. I told my girlfriend at the time, who was a huge Justin Timberlake fan and she couldn't believe I met him without knowing it was him. She wouldn't let it go for like a month. Edit. To answer some questions, this was a Memphis Grizzlies game, and no the bartender wasn't messing with me, because during one of the timeouts, they showed him on camera, and had him come onto the court, to wave at fans and hype the crowd up etc. I don't think he expected them to do that, and didn't like it, because he left at half time. Probably just wanted to go to a game without being hounded by fans or something. Edit 2, I never got a good look at Jessica Biel. She was wearing sunglasses as well, but she didn't say anything at all during our conversation, and since I didn't even realize I was talking to Justin Timberlake, I wasn't about to gawk at this random beautiful woman while talking to her husband. Pedit 3, I'm aware JT is a part owner of the Grizzlies. I'm not sure if I'm right about why he left at half time in my first edit above. That's just a complete guess given that one, he left. 2. I'm assuming he didn't want to be recognized with the hat and sunglasses and 3. He obviously goes to plenty of Grizzlies games, and usually he isn't trying to hide his face, assuming that's what he was trying to do this time around. But who knows. He cold left the game early for any number of reasons. Robin Williams used to walk around my own childhood country town near SF. I saw him once, after hearing many rumors about his sightings. Not entirely unlike Bigfoot or Nessie sightings. My brain didn't fully comprehend what it was seeing. But I could tell he was trying his very best to remain incognito, and not draw any unwanted attention. We locked eyes. He smiled. I smiled and nodded back. And we both went our separate ways. Worked at a hotel and Russell Crowe came in the lobby. He went to the house phones and called front desk. Where I was working. I could see him pretty easily. I answered the phone and he asked to be connected to a room. So I put him through. 
this wasn't long after he threw a phone at a hotel clerk, so I didn't want to take a chance at pissing him off.